Welcome to the uh, another lecture of simulation of business systems course and today uh, unlike the normal lectures we are going to get exposed to a particular popular simulation software called arena. Uh, up to this point we have been focusing on understanding the need of simulation, what is simulation, what are the business problems or business systems that can be studied using simulation, different types of simulations and what are the business decisions that can be modeled using simulation, what is a model, what is a system, what is an environment, what is the boundary of a system, entities, activities, all those details that are related pertaining to a simulation was studied in our course so far. Also we have seen there are multiple ways to build a simulation model. One of it is to use a general purpose programming language like C, C++, etc. Another option was to use specialized simulation lang programming languages like SimScript, Simon, SPSS, etc., SLAM, etc. And the third option was to use specialized simulation packages, software packages which allow you to build models. The as I said earlier building the simulation model is an art and as well as a science. So, you require appropriate tools to do it and in today's lecture what we are going to see is one such tool called arena. Arena is a simulation package, it is not a simulation language, it is a not a general purpose language, it is a simulation package made by Rockwell software and there is a simulation programming language underneath arena which is called Simon. Okay. So, if you look into the desktop, you will actually see that Arena typically is appears on the, the launch bar of Windows. By the way, Arena is a Windows software, it is not up available in any other system. There is other thing is if you go to all programs and if you go to the Rockwell software, there is always a tab called Rockwell software. Typically, it is scroll down to R, you will see Rockwell software, you click this, you will see quite a lot of details and in which you will see a folder with arena named on it, you click the arena folder, you will see input out analyzer, output analyzer, process analyzer etc. and you will also see a icon of arena. So, what you do is you click the arena icon and the software launches and a message comes out that says that it is a training and evaluation model or a student version of arena which is available from the Rockwell website. Okay. So, uh, you click ok with that and it goes away and this whatever you see now is the graphical user interface of arena or this is a simulation software package that provides you a GUI. Okay. GUI stands for graphical user interfaces and this GUI allows you to actually build models. So, this one if you look into this, this GUI is a Microsoft window, you can do it into different sizes, you can customize it into the size that you want all those kind of things. Typically, whatever you do, if you do this, uh, then you can reduce the size of this by holding it one side and dragging and doing all those kind of things. Anyway, we are going to look into us as a full screen model. The major things that you need to look into is on the top is the different options. You have the file options, which allows you to save, open a new file, uh, print and those kind of aspects. Then there is the edit, which allows you to do the copy, paste and all those kind of other aspects along with this. Then the view is allows you to zoom in, zoom out of the models, it allows you to show the grids and all those other aspects which I will show you in a minute. Then there are other tools which is the input analyzer, process analyzer, output analyzer, report database, uh, optquest, optquest is the optimization package for arena to optimize a business model. Then you have the arrange options, we will see how to group and ungroup quite a lot of things in this regard. Then there is this object in which the auto connect and the other aspects are smart connect are given there. You can unclick them if you want to, but I will show you what it is. Then the run is how to use arena software package or how to use your model to do experiments. That is done as part of uh, this run setup. Then you have the window where you allow how the window and other things is. 
Typically, when you open a screen is created for you and then you have the model aspects of it. And then there is the arena help, basically the help nodes and other things that are related to arena are available here. So, some people like working on blank space. So, this space that you see here, this particular space, the white space right here is where you build the model and different details of the model, different processes, activities, entities, whatever is pertaining to the model that you are building here, they will be listed in the bottom window. Okay. So, this is the model window and this is the detail of the individual aspects of the model will be shown right here. And the one that you see here, this option is where the different components that you can use to build simulation model is available in this area. So, you have the create module, the minute you click the create module, you can see that the details are available right here. Let me zoom it up a little bit more so that you can actually see it better. Okay. And view, you can always say zoom in, okay. it allows you to zoom things better. So, create allows you to create a, a arrival of an entity, dispose is like the removal of an entity, process is any type of a process, milling, drilling, planing, service process, cleaning, inspection, they all come under the process. Process is typically a transformation process. Then there is a decision module available to you. Then there is a batching option. Batch means you group things and so that they all follow a same pattern. Then there is a separate option available, assign, record, all those kind of things. And similarly, we have what we call as attribute. Uh, we have seen attributes are associated with entities. These are speci specific aspects of an entity. Then you have entity. Entity is a thing that moves within the simulation software or the simulation model. So, this is a way to you can create an entity. Then you have queue. Queue is a, um, the place where the entities wait to get serviced. Then you have resource. The resource is where the entity goes there to get its service done or a value addition happens at a resource. Then there are variables whose value varies. Schedule is, is a condition or a specific set of time resource pair assigned so that we know where the activity to do and then there is a set of activities which is like a different bit than slightly different than a batching process. So, these are the basic processes of it. Then you have the report modules which shows you the reports that are associated with it and it also shows an option of how to navigate with the simulation model. Okay. So, today given that I am uh, given that we just talked about the simulation and the different aspect of arena and then you have the icons of uh, various aspects of arena shown right here, uh, new file, open file, save, then uh, attach certain values, print, zoom print preview, okay. uh, then uh, there is like same like a tape recorder play buttons, you know play, stop, rewind all those kind of things when you are doing, when you are trying to do the simulation model, when you are trying to do the experiments with the simulation model. So, I hope you guys understood what a, uh, arena basic aspects of it and whenever you open an arena, you can actually see that it is a student version, it is a training and evaluation mode. It is cannot be used for commercial purposes. You can see it on the top of the status bar, and you are by by default you open a model which is called as the which is shown here as the model one. Okay, shown right here it says model one. So whenever arena comes in, you are allowed to do all these kind of things. There are a couple of options. The first thing is I want to show you is the grid aspects. Okay, so if you click this grid, okay, then you can see that this portion where you are building the model, you will get these dot dot dots which is like a graph paper, okay, like a larger graph paper, uh, but so that you can arrange things nicely. Okay. If you do not want it, if you do not like it, you take this away and it will go away from there. Same way you can put rulers, the minute you put rulers, you will actually get to see rulers on both sides. Here is a vertical ruler and here is a horizontal ruler. So, you are building a model which is more like the layout of a factory, then a ruler is a good thing for you to have. And if you do not want the ruler, you can click the ruler again and the ruler goes away. Same way you can also ask for guides. So, the guide means whenever you are going and clicking at any point of time, it will actually show you what the specific uh, aspect of it is. And if you see a grid also, you can click the grid. I will repeat it once again. If you want to see the grid, 
then you go to the view and click the grid and the graph paper like arrangement comes in so that you can arrange things all in the same order same level and other things if you don't like it then you can click it off i normally don't use the grid but some people do it you can also use a ruler and this is specifically available you can see that when you move this these two blue lines you can see a blue line here and I see a blue line here these blue lines can be used to exactly position where it is this is typically helpful in when you are trying to simulate the area inside a factory for movement of those kind of things so this kind of a scenario is pretty good in a system like that okay but if you don't like it go click the rulers and the ruler will go away so initially when we make this model we are just going to we are just going to uh, see how to just make a model we will not worry about grids snapping to grids and those kind of things so as i said earlier any arena model what we have to do it is we are trying to how to use these basic processes of arena to build this if you want the advanced processes then you can go here and ask it to show the advanced processes but i will show that slightly later okay not now okay because i don't want to confuse you guys okay and um, other part of it is we are going to build a very simple model very simple model means we are only going to use one machine single machine problem so the first thing that you need to do is you need to create the entities that are going to come into the system entities means the things that are going in a factory so the first thing that we are going to do here is we click the create one then click it keep clicking the mouse drag it and leave it at this white space okay you can move it anywhere around in the white space so this is the first module that we use first basic processes of arena that we use which is called as the create module so these basic processes in arena is typically called as the modules in an arena okay so the create modules is typically used for if you look at here create is a basic process it is written right here and this one means it's the first create and the name is create one you can change the name i will show you how to change the name and the entity type is it can also change this and this basically says random is the type type of the create which means it's a exponential distribution the time between arrivals are exponential so that the arrival process is random then value is one which means there's one entity that is created the unit is hours so if you say the five means so now this means in every one hour on an average an entity is created and one entity per arrival so one hour arrival happens there's only one entity and you can it can create up to infinite entities so these are the details of the entity and you can see that i am going to show you how to actually use this uh, create to create an entity arrival so in this case the first thing i am going to do is i am going to double click this okay so if you go to this module and double click a new window opens up right here okay this window allows this is the same thing as the basic process here but it is a little bit more of a better user interface okay so i am going to change the name of the create i am going to change it into parts arrival to system okay when i say that it's called parts arrival to the system and i click any other place so it will change the name of this one once i finish with that you will see how it is being done i'll just show you okay the minute i click the name of it is create one is now changed to parts arrival to the system and you can see that the name also has changed right here okay so if you double click this you will see that the parts arrival to system okay or parts arrive arrive in system okay i'm changing the name okay and the entity type it's written as entity one i can change this so what i do is i click on this the whole thing gets highlighted and i am going to say it as the entity type is part so a part is arriving in the system and just naming it as a part and it says is time between arrivals it says it as random exponential if you click this you will get to see four options coming out of it number one is the exponential then is a schedule schedule means it you can make things arrive at a particular schedule then there is constant constant means at every specified constant interval entities will arrive into the system and then there's an expression you can build custom expressions if you want to simulate any specific scenario so for this purpose we are just going to keep it as random exponential okay 
and I am going to change this value uh, from 1 and I am going to say 5. Okay. So, what I am trying to say is that the time between arrivals, the time between two entities that are arriving into the system follows a random process. Random process means the time between arrivals are exponential. In the probability lecture that we are going to see in the class soon, I will talk to you about the random dis the exponential distribution and why the significance of the same. And then I am going to change this units of hours into minutes. So, what I am saying is that the time between arrivals of into the system is an on a, e follows an random process which means the time between arrivals are exponential and the time between arrivals have a mean value of 5 and the time units are in minutes. So, it is an exponential distribution with a mean of 5 minutes. Okay. And I say that the entities per arrival I leave it as 1, maximum arrival is at uh, infinity and the first creation I leave it at 0. So, the first entity gets created at 0. So, once I click this and ok, then you can see that the bottom portion also gets updated. Okay. The same exact things gets actually updated, whatever I clicked here gets updated in the portion below. Okay. So, this is a, this dialog box is a good way of typing things that are necessary for you to add into the system. Okay. So, just to make you guys understand this once again, this is a create process that is created and dragged and dropped here and then double clicked on it, uh, dialog box was opened in which you change the name of the system, change the entity type of the system to a path, then the time between arrivals was changed to the, uh, the distribution was maintained or the time between arrival process is maintained as a random process which means the time between arrivals are exponential, the value is 5 and the time units is minutes and entities per arrival is 1, max arrival is at inf infinity, infinite and first creations uh, the main the first entity arrives at 0 time 0, 0.0. So, when the simulation begins, it begins by the arrival of the first entity. Okay. Hope this much is clear to all of you guys. Once this is done, then the next thing that we do is entities arrive, their next job is to actually get processed. So, you require a process box. So, you come to the basic processes and you click this box that is set as the process. Okay. And in the process, what we typically do is we click this, keep the mouse clicked and drag and drop it here. Okay. So, you can see that it is shows us process 1. Okay. I can see, I can move it here, I can move it here, I can move it anywhere. Typically, the parts arrive, then they move to the process and then they get out of the system. So, you try to create the same flow in a graphical format in the system. Okay. So, that is what you are trying to do. So, the process follows the part arrival in the system. Okay. So, then what I can do is, I am assuming that this process is a drilling process. Let us assume that it is a drilling machine. Okay. So, what I can do is, as I said did earlier with the create process, I double click this and a new process gets opened. And the first thing is the process 1 is the name, I can double click the name, you can also see that um, it is right here. So, I double click the name and I am going to change it as the drilling center. Okay. So, my process name is it is a drilling center. Okay. So, instead of process 1, now it will be named as a drilling center. Okay. Then there is a different type of processes. The So, it can be a standard process which means a standalone process like this or it can be a sub model which is the second option that is given here. We will study what is a sub model lay in the later classes. Okay. Then there is a logic portion of it where we basically have to decide what is the logic with this. So, the, the most simplest logic in the case of a process is a delay process. Delay process means it comes in and it just waits. Okay. So, uh, for the delay there is no logic, but if you click this you can actually see there is a cease delay, cease delay release and delay release. So, I am going to select the cease delay release process which means an entity comes into the system and then it waits to see whether the resource is free and if the resource is free it actually seizes the resource and it stays on the resource until at the delay time period where it is gets value gets added to it. So, in this case it is a drilling center, so a hole gets drilled on the system and once it is done the hole is drilled properly then it is released. Okay. So, this cease delay release is a value addition system where 
what we are trying to do is we, the entity that is coming into the drilling center sees tries to see whether the drilling center is free and if it is free it seizes the drilling center and once it seizes the drilling center it gets delayed on drilling center until the hole gets drilled and once the delay is over it actually gets released from the system and then it goes and does what it is supposed to do and it the process the next entity tries to seizes the drilling center ok. The minute you use a cease delay release this new form comes up which is the resources ok. Before the resources I want to bring your attention to something called as this priority and for the time being we just leave the priority at medium. You can have a high priority which means any entity with a higher priority will go first then there is a medium and then there is a low. For the practical purposes we are going to use the medium as a priority at this point. Now as a resources what we are going to do is we are going to click the add resource at this time period ok. So, when you click the add resource you get this new screen new pull out you are going to add a new resource this resource is a resource that will be tried to seized by the entity and the resource name by default name is as a resource one and I am going to change this to a new one it is called as a drill drill machine ok. So, the drilling center has a drill machine you can make it as a resource or you can make it as a set if you make it as a set then it is a set of resources if you make it as just a resource then the name comes back it says the drilling machine and I have only one drilling machine for the time being I can make two drilling machines which becomes a parallel resource we will study all of this later. So, as of now we are not doing the set we are only doing the resource in which the resource name is now changed to drill machine and I hit ok. The minute I do that you can see in the resource tab the resource drill machine number 1 or numeral 1 comes up which means this cease delay release process this is a process cease delay release process uses a resource the name of the resource is drill machine and there is only one unit of that that is what it actually says ok. And this also tells arena or the simulation software package that there is a machine. So, you have to keep track of the utilization. So, this is where you see this report statistics is written right here which actually allows you to collect the statistics of the what is going on in the machine ok. Then in this case there are also you can do multiple delay types ok for the simplest option. I am going to make it as a constant process. The constant means there is no variation in the system. Other option is normal. The minute you hit normal, then you have to provide the mean and the standard deviation. If you put a triangular, then you have to give the minimum, most likely, and maximum value. If you put uniform, it will give you the minimum and the maximum. Then you can use the expression also, where you can put a exponential. There are multiple probability distributions are available right here. You can see triangular, Erlang, beta, gamma all those kind of things are available here. But we will see all of these things later for the time being I am going to take the simplest one which is called as a constant ok. And I am going to change the hours to minutes because the arrival is in minutes. So, I should probably have the service also in the time the uh, process time also should be in minutes. And let us say that I am going to give it as a 7 minute process and you can do multiple things it is a value added non value added those kind of things I am just going to use it as a value added non value added means you are just waiting there delay no value gets added to the system transfer means you are moving it from one thing to another typically transfer from one pallet to another and stuff like that. And then there is what you call as a wait where is we are waiting in which you are utilizing space and resources stuff like this. So, for that as of now we are just adding the value added part of the stuff. So, once you have made the value added part then you hit ok ok and you can immediately see that the drilling center comes into picture and you see this blue line ok. We are looking blue line which is a Q ok. So, you can see that the drilling center is a standard resource type it is a cease delay release the priority is medium there is one resource delay type is constant it is in minutes and it takes 7 minutes to get the hole drilled ok. So, if you double click this again this dialog box comes up where you can keep on changing the things ok all right. And you can also see that there is a drilling machine queue ok. So, if you double click on this it actually shows the details of the queue. For the time being we will not do anything with it we will just leave it here 
and we will come back to this later down the road. Okay. We will see how the queue aspects and other things are seen. But you can also see that if I click this queue and click this here, I can see that the details of the queue right here. So, the way to do it is typically first go, typically you will be in the process, you will see the details of the process. What you do is you click on this queue, it says drilling center dot queue, which means this queue is associated with the drilling center. This queue is associated with the drilling center. The name of the process is drilling center. Now, if we want to find the details of the queue, what is the discipline of the queue? The queue is the place where the entities will come and wait. Okay. Then I click on the queue, it says the drilling center dot queue. Then I come to the basic process and I click this spreadsheet like thing called queue. The minute I click it, the details of the queue gets shown here. Okay. The first one it says is the name of the queue, which says drill center dot queue. Okay. That is the name of the queue. Then the type it says first in first out, which means 5 which means whichever entity comes in the first, it will actually leave the first also. Okay. The next one that we are going to see is that there is a LIFO, last in first out, which is typically like a stack. We are not going to deal with the other things. The lowest attribute and highest attribute values, these are used if you provide the priority. So, the high low values are used if you are providing the priority in the queuing system. And this is not a shared queue, it is only associated with this drilling center. There are multiple drilling machines here because there is only one drilling machine as you remember. So, you do not need to share the queue. Okay. Since there is only one drilling machine, so it is not shared and you have to report statistics on the queue. So, that means when the simulation is done, Arena will report the statistics of how the system is performing with the in this case. Okay. So, you have seen how the create a process and see the queue aspect of it. And if you click the resource here, it actually shows you what is the resource that you have created. It shows a drilling machine as the resource that was created. There is one resource that was created, okay, drilling machine. So, if you click this and there is a fixed capacity, that means the capacity of the drilling machine is fixed, one, which means it, there is only one drilling machine. How many, how many times it is busy, how many times it is idle, all these things values will be populated after the uh, simulation is done or you can provide these kind of data here. If you say idle per hour means if you say 0.2 per hour, which means 20 percent of the time in an hour, the machine should be idle. So, it will enforce those kind of things. Uh, we will talk about all those details later down the road and you also have to report statistics in this point. Okay. So, that is also written right here. Okay. So, you have probably seen the basic aspects of uh, how to create a model in arena. Then the last thing you need to do is once the parts arrive into the system, the entity arrives into the system, it moves to the drilling center, if the machine is free, it seizes the machine, it gets a hole drilled and then it is released from the machine. Then once it is released, its job is done, then it has to go ahead and leave the system. That is created by using this thing called dispose. Okay. You click this one and drag it right here, which basically says it is used to simulate a scenario where the entity leaves the system. So, if you double click this, it actually shows the name of this one and you can say that parts leave system. Okay. If you click that and it also there is a box called record entity statistics, uh, please remember to click this so that you do not have any uh, problem in this regard. Okay. So, that all the entity statistics are stored. You click OK and then what happens is the new name gets changed here. It says parts leave the system. Okay. So, once it is done, you have the basic building blocks, the arrival of the entity into the system, the process, the value addition process and the point where the parts leave the system, all these three are created. Now, you have to somehow tell Arena or the simulation package, how the entities will flow from one place to another. For that, you have to connect these modules or you have to tell the simulation package which module is connected to whom. So, in our case, the flow of logic is from parts arrive into the system to the drilling center and from the drilling center to the parts leaving the system. So, for that, we use this tool which is called as the connect tool. Okay. So, we click the connect tool and you go to the place where the connection should begin, where the entity should come from. So, the from is always shown in the green color. Okay. So, you click here 
and then you take it and move it to the red color, red color is the 2. So, the minute you click here, you can see that it is connected. So, that means parts arrive into the system and from there it will go to the drilling center and when it reaches the drilling center, it will see whether the drilling machine is free. If it is free, it immediately gets to the onto the drilling machine and a hole is drilled. If it is not free, then it goes and waits in this queue okay, for the machine to be free and once the machine is free and it turns comes from the queue, it will actually move into the drilling machine and it will get its hole drilled. Similarly, once the hole drilling is happened, it has to now move from the drilling machine and has to leave the system. That logic is created by again clicking the connector and bringing it to the drilling center which means this is the from. Now, the parts which are finished the drilling of the hole will move from the drilling center to the parts leave the system which is the disposed portion of the entity. Click that it is connected. So, it does not have to be in a straight line, you can actually put it right here or you can put it right here. Things will adjust accordingly, you do not have to worry about any of those things. I usually like to put things in a straight line, so I kind of uh, keep move the things like this, so that uh, you know you do not have any problem doing this. Okay. Now, if you think about this, what we have just created is a graphical representation of a single server queuing system, single server queuing system is represented by the drilling machine, where parts arrive into the system, goes to the drilling center, gets a hole drilled and then the parts leave the system. And we have a queue which is first in first out, the details can be seen from here. We have a resource which is a drilling machine, which is a fixed capacity and we also have an entity, you can think is that is a part and the details of this we will add much later down the road. Okay. So, now once we have finished this, okay, then what we have to also do is we now have to use this to conduct an experiment. For that, the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the top portion of this one which is the file, the concept and then you come here to the run option. Okay. When you click the run option, drop down menu or drop down like a new window shows up in which the first thing that you need to pick up is the uh, setup. This is a setup that you will use to run the system. Okay. So, click the setup and a new dialog box appears in front of you. Okay. This dialog box is the box by which we do simulation experiments. If you remember simulation experiments is doing numerical evaluation of the system using a simulation model. In this particular case, the simulation model is built using the graphical user interface of Arena GUI. It is a graphical model. Okay. We are going to use this model and conduct simulation experiments or what we call as numerical experiments in this system. Okay. So, what you do is we go to this run setup and you can see that there are many tabs. So, you go to what you call as the run control part. Okay. And uh, you ensure that this always compile on the go is clicked okay. and if it is so, then there is a pause after warnings also is clicked, do not unclick them, ensure that you leave them there. Then you click to the replication parameters. Okay. So, initially for this model, we are going to create a scenario of only one replication, single replication. And it says the start date and time, so you can select your date and time when you click here, the date shows up and date and time shows up, so that this is required for you to keep in records because simulation reports are used in a chronological fashion. The warm up period we leave it at 0 for the time being okay. and the replication length is as of now it is infinite, uh, that is what uh, people do most of the time they try to run an infinite simulation and then it will you, it will actually make your life miserable. So, since our case is that we have been using our time units as minutes, I am going to move it into our time units as minutes, okay. the warm up period and the time units for the replication also I am going to make it as minutes and instead of the infinite I am going to say that I am going to simulate this for let us say 8 hour shift, 8 hour shift is 8 times 6 48. So, 480 minutes. So, if I say that I simulate this whole system for 480 minutes, that means I am going to run the model. So, it will start at time 
z t equal to 0 and it will keep on running until the time clock, the simulation clock reaches 480 minutes. Once it reaches 480 minutes, the simulation will stop and the base time units I am going to change it into minutes so that everybody is of the same criteria. Okay? And there are 24 hours per day, we are not going to change that at this point. So, just to remind you uh, once again, we leave the number of replication at 1, okay. then the warm up period is remains at 0. Before the warm up period, the start date and time, please ensure that you pick the appropriate date from the date picker that is available and also ensure that the initialize between replications, the statistics and system need to also be saved. Then the warm up period is kept as 0, 0.0 minutes and the replication length is kept as 480 minutes time units and then the base time units is kept as minutes. Again, remember that at the 480 minutes means I am simulating it for an 8 hour shift. Each shift is 6, each hour is 60 minutes. So, 8 hour shift is 8 times 60 minutes which is 480 minutes. Once I do this and click OK, what happens is that the system, the you are ready to run the simulation. Okay. Now, what do I need to do is I just need to first save the model. So, I just say save. Okay. So, it will give me an option. So, I am just going to save it on the desktop for the time. No, I will actually not save it in the desktop. I will save it in my folder only. Okay. So, I will save it in the uh, folder where this uh, simulation is there. Okay. So, I am going to save it as the model 1 and the file is always called as DOE. So, I am just going to save it here, save. Okay. So, the model is saved. Before running the simulation, you have to ensure that you save the model. Okay. You save it in an appropriate folder wherever you want to save it and we can use this model later for analysis. Okay. Once it is done, you go to the top and you can see these play buttons, the play, step, fast forward, all this kind of thing. Okay. So, I am going to click the play button. And out of magic, let us see whether we can actually see the simulation software running. So, you click the go button. Okay. Let me do this. Uh, let me close this. Sometimes the evaluation virtual software, okay, it is not ready to save. Okay. Sometimes Arena has this issue of creating unpleasant experiences. By the way, Arena software when you use you have to have pretty good memory to run arena. In this case, you should at least have a 8 gigabytes of RAM, if not at least 4 gigabytes of RAM. If not 8 gigabytes is a better option. Okay. So, what I just did was that I closed the arena. When you have an error like this, what you do is you go close the arena model. So, everything is closed. You go to file and you say open and you go to where you saved the model and click the model, model.doe, it opens up whatever you have done earlier is saved there. And you go to the run and look at the run setup and replication parameters, whatever you have done, it is all saved right there. Okay. And what we do is we kind of now going to simulate the model. Uh, hold on a second, it is doing the checking, it, is, it will take a little bit of time period. You see it is saying checking, checking, checking. It will take a little bit of time period to run this. So, now we had seen the one of the first problems that arena software can happen with arena software due to the lack of memory. So, we have fixed that problem. So, what we do is now again we go back to arena, restart arena and you click OK and you have saved the model. So, I am going to do is I am going to open the model and I anyway this time I have saved it to the desktop. So, life is easy. Okay. So, open this and the same thing whatever we saw the same model is available. So, this is one of the advantage of saving the uh, model. Uh, you can see the queues, the resources exactly remains the same, the drilling process what we said. Okay. Now, you go to the run and look at the run setup, the replication parameters are also exactly, the warm up period is 0, 480 minutes of the replication length and then every time condition everything is 24 hours. Okay. Once it is there, what you do the next is, you basically try to simulate the running of the system. So, what you do is, you go to this play button and click this. Okay. So, what happens is you can see that the parts will arrive and you can see that they are waiting in the drilling queue and you can see that an animation is going on in which the part is being coming in and going into the system and after some point of time you get a message that says that 
simulation has run to completion, would you like to see the results? And you click yes. Okay. The minute you click yes, then a report comes up. Okay. And this is the report of Arena, which is typically done with the help of crystal reports actually. And in this, the major thing is you can see that the unnamed project, we have not named the project yet, but that we can worry about it later. So, one other way to see the report is you scroll down by page. Okay. That is one way to look into the report. Okay. Uh, another, so, there are three pages. So, the, if you click this, go to the next page, it will take you to the next page. Okay. So, we go to task manager, Arena is running, I do not want to stop this. Forcefully quit Arena, end task. And now, uh, this problem is very, very common when you use Arena in any of your software. I am happy that we are facing this problem now, because this is very common. I mean, most of you would have a 4 gigabyte uh, RAM machine and the problem with that it is uh, such kind of a 4 gigabyte RAM machine will not be a, uh, Arena will actually take a lot of effort in doing this. So, again going back to the same process, let us see whether we can even make it happen. We do open this, the model, uh, open, then let me save it once there, then I run the simulation quickly. Okay. So, model is done, yes, the results are shown. So, let me end this, so that I might get a little bit of time, let me see file. Uh, if I can find a way to save the report. Okay. But anyway, so for the time being, the first thing it actually shows is the uh, unnamed project. There is one replication, time units was in minute, number out 68. So, that means in the 480 minutes or in an 8 hour shift, you were able to do uh, what we call as a 68 items arrived into this and you were uh, uh, able to you use the 68 ones which are completed the process. Okay. Now, we try to move to the entity again same problem. So, uh, I will do one thing, I will try to change the model slightly and see whether we can make it slightly simple and then we go from there. Um, please bear with me. Thank you.